Hi, I'm Rebecca Valcarcel. Let's take a look at The Storm, a short story by Kate Chopin. The plot here is very simple. A huge storm comes in, two married people have an affair, and then everyone lives happily ever after. <laughs> and that's it. So we could talk about the symbolism here and some of the language she uses, but I want to focus on themes and what Kate Chopin is really doing here in this story. Why does she write this story? What is she trying to get across? Well, several things, I think. For one thing, she's writing at the end of the 1800s when women are not even allowed to own property. So we see that she is pointing out how strict the roles for women are. So one issue raised here is the roles of women, especially the role of wife and mother. When we first meet Calixta, she is deep into the duties of being a wife and mom. She's sewing, she's been washing because she's got clothes drying out there on the gallery, which is the porch area. She's just been working, 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 and she's working so hard that she doesn't even notice the approach of the storm. So she's been denying, we could say, symbolically here, the storm is being ignored. So symbolically, we can say that she's been denying some part of herself, some force inside of her that she's been not paying attention to. And we do that at our peril, because if we ignore parts of ourselves and, and forces within us, then we don't live a full life, right? So here she is in this wife-mother role, and it is consuming her. Okay, then what else? We've got the, the storm as a force that shakes things up, cleans out the atmosphere, you might say, and leaves her feeling really good. So after the storm, after the affair, she's happy in her wife-mother role. She cooks up this meal, she makes coffee, she accepts the little gift of the shrimp can with a lot of uh, humor and sweetness, and her husband and son are thrilled, like, oh wow, we thought she was going to be mad at us because she is so strict about having everything clean, and oh my gosh, we're full of mud, and she's going to just get on to us. But no, she's happy, she's relaxed, she's generous. She actually is a better wife and mom after the affair. Now, is Kate Chopin saying, oh, women should be having affairs <laughs> so that they can stand to be married? <laughs> well, I, I hope not. I think the bigger message is that when we deny our needs, and they may be sexual needs, but I think in a larger sense, the, the, our inner needs, our, the body, the mind, the soul, as whole people, we have needs. And if we don't express ourselves and we don't fulfill ourselves, we have nothing to give. So I think that's a second important theme here in the story. Not only are the roles that we play, get they can become all-consuming and that's dangerous, but secondly, if we don't fulfill ourselves, we run the risk of becoming empty husks of people instead of being filled with life and energy, we will just kind of shrivel up. And she is so rejuvenated by this affair and by the storm, she comes to her own family with a new energy and vigor. And everybody's excited and happy about that. So this sexuality here for Kate Chopin is something natural, something that needs expression, that needs to be acknowledged, not ignored. As you know, she was ignoring the storm at first, but no, don't ignore it. Own it, admit it, uh, find a way to, to healthily express it, and then you'll be a happier person. Now, what about the morality, though, of having an affair? Well, uh, we can't deny that these people have both cheated on their spouses, and and according to society, that's very bad. And according to the church, that's very bad. And in fact, we have mention of the church just briefly because she takes down the Sunday clothing that she has washed. And when she takes down her husband's Sunday clothes, she's kind of taking away the church's restrictions for the moment, for the duration of the storm. This will be out of the picture. So the church here for Chopin in this story is really one more layer of, of duty and one more layer of repression for the woman. 
So we need to let the church go in order for her to fulfill herself and then be able to do better as being a mom and a wife. Now, is that saying that we should never have any rules and we should all be unfaithful? No, I, I don't think um, Chopin is talking about, you know, massive free-for-all sexual freedom. But she is saying that these strictures and these rules do cost something. When a woman like Calixta has done the dutiful thing, she didn't marry the guy she was really attracted to, Mr. Alsay, and they have history, as we see in the story. No, she didn't marry him. She was a good girl. She married somebody from her own class. She has a decent marriage, a friendly marriage. She has a son. And, you know, she loves him and everything. But that's not all she is. And I think Chopin is trying to say women are not only the wife and the mom. And when women are repressed and not allowed to fulfill themselves and also express themselves, then they are becoming more shrewish and, and, you know, less happy and less able to give. So we need to be able to give, and Chopin is, is showing what can happen if we are kind of pushed into the situation where the only way to get the fulfillment is through some immoral means. What would be better is if we had a society that allowed her to do that for example, like marry the guy she really wants to instead of following the rules about class. Or if she could somehow be fulfilled in other ways, but her needs aren't being met in this whole system, see. So it's it's not so much that having an affair is evil and bad, you know, which she doesn't say because she doesn't judge these characters at all. It's more like the system she has to live in is evil and bad. Or a life, if you choose a life that is too structured or too narrow for your soul, that that is not going to work. And so that's the real problem. Now, being driven to forsake your marriage vows or being driven to use um, an affair as the way to rejuvenate yourself is a sad situation. It's terrible that it's come to that. It, what would be nice is if we had a society that didn't make that necessary. But here is this woman in a restrictive time period where this is her only way to get any kind of fulfillment here, especially sexual fulfillment, which for Chopin counts as something that needs to be acknowledged. You can't get away from this force inside of yourself. You have to acknowledge it, do something with it, and sexuality is not to be ignored or vilified, but in fact she enjoys sex, this character. And it's a healthy uh, sexual act. This is not a, you know, violence or anything like that. It's a really beautiful sexual experience that they have together. It's very mutual. And it's just a healthy thing. It's a f fulfilling and happy thing. But it's not allowed culturally, morally, right? But unfortunately, it's what they both need. And when they go back to their spouses, it has good effects. Now, maybe we could blame the storm. Like, you know, they weren't looking for each other. The storm forced them together. And that's true. I mean, as a plot device, Chopin has let the storm uh, give them an opportunity to be together. But the storm itself, the force, the natural force of it, is like sexuality, the natural force of it, that cannot be just ignored and denied. It, it must be withstood or accommodated or acted upon somehow or we're going to divorce ourselves from ourselves. You know, we can't keep a portion of ourselves separate. We've got to be whole people, including our sexuality, has to be part of it. And in the role of mother-wife, sometimes sexuality is sidelined and, and not included in the identity of a woman. So I think Chopin is talking about that too. So sexuality as a force that needs to be acknowledged, uh, and healthy sexuality especially, and the, the roles of mother and wife, and then also the, the issues about marriage. All of these are being raised in this story. And I appreciate her candor here. She's writing so honestly about this at a time when it was a taboo subject 
And in fact, Chopin didn't even try to publish this short story because she knew it would be totally scandalous and it would shock people. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed exploring the themes of this story with me. There's so much more we could talk about, like the symbolism of the pants and uh, why is it canned shrimp, you know, in a can, all tamely in a can. But let's leave it here for now and join me for another video sometime.